Welcome to another Seed to Harvest episode. This week, we got a heavy hitter lined up for you. Full post-harvest analysis, lab results, and another Cannabis Cup winner. This right here, ladies and gentlemen, is something I've been antsy to share for a few months. And although there is a lot in this episode that makes it different from the rest, there is something that is the exact same as all the other episodes on the channel. This is strictly an educational documentary backed by science and research. I do not in any way promote the use of legal or illegal psychoactive substances. So please be responsible and thank you. So look, it's been a few weeks since the last episode and I really got to explain for the lack of uploads. Guys, let's just say December was nuts. Celebrated my 30th B-Day with mum, grandma. What do you think, grandma? Is it approved? Is it grandma approved? Oh, it is. <laughs> the girlfriend. Ow, 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 ow. And my closest friends. Everything went absolutely perfect until the moment I left the laptop behind at the resort. There was no time to stop though, because the next day I had to fly back to Columbia and hit one of my favorite cannabis cups of the year, Copa Seychat. Then just days later, it was time to hit the bro's traditional road trip to the cannabis cup, Copa del Sol. This was a whole adventure in itself and we'll get into that later. So for all those wondering why it's been a few weeks since the last drop, it's been a busy month, but I really do appreciate your comments and messages. I've missed you guys and I just want to make it clear that in 2023, we're going back to the weekly and working on some really dope new projects. Anyway, let's get back to the reason we're all here. Ladies and gentlemen, I introduce you to the Sunset Paradise. Bred by Paradise Seeds and part of their California Cannabis Seed Collection. As always, we're going to be following this strain from seed to harvest and showing you everything we did along the way. And as requested by you guys, we also have the cannabinoid and terpene lab results from Imperial Labs coming up later in this episode. And trust me, you're going to want to see these results. Something else worth mentioning is the gear and tech that we're going to be using on this run. This lady we're about to review was grown using the 4x4 AC Infinity Advanced Grow System. I'll be including the LED distance, PPFD readings, and obviously the final flower results so you can see just how well she really performs. And by the end of this episode, you'll know if this full kit is right for you and if these genetics are worth checking out. So make sure you stick around to the end. If this is your first time on the channel, welcome to Home Grow TV, the internet's highest quality grow show. And if you're like us and love seed to harvest videos, subscribe now because we got a ton on the way. Buckle up and get ready because this episode is officially starting. As always, to start off the seed to harvest, let's first talk about the genetics and the breeders who created it. I actually did an in-depth story on the history of the breeders, Paradise Seeds, in the Mendocino Skunk and El Dorado OG episodes. If you don't know their history or haven't heard of them before, it's really interesting and worth a watch. You see the structure, it's very stable. All the plants are very identical. The Sunset Paradise we're gonna be testing today is a luxury scoop of the popular strain Gelato, which is across a Thin Mint Girl Scout Cookies and Sunset Sherbet. So basically this is their twist or selection of Gelato which makes it an indica dominant hybrid that has its own distinct personality. According to Paradise Seeds, this strain is a very quick finisher and delivers the ultimate color show and fat flavorful buds that ooze a sense of exotic. The flavors should be fruity, lavender, and effects euphoric and physical. The flower time is 50 days and we should get a THC reading of 18 to 22% which we're actually going to be testing later in this episode. They also say that the Sunset Paradise effect is not for the inexperienced user. It begins with an initial powerful wave of euphoria, which is followed by an intense hit of bodily relaxation. The Sunset effect is also notoriously long-lasting in nature, 
And yep, you bet, we'll be testing all of this as well in our post-harvest analysis. Wow, bro. This is gonna be fun. So let's get right into it and jump into the veg phase. This sunset paradise seed got popped using the cotton pad method. Then straight into a little seedling pot mixed up with cocoa and castings. Just 25 days later, in week 4 veg, and the sunset was looking fantastic. Large green fan leaves, but with such a small pot, it was probably time for a transplant. Cut to 5 days later, and it was transplant day. For transplant, I had to fill my base, put my seedling pot inside, then fill up the sides. This allows me to pull out the plants and have a perfect size hole ready to go. And even though I already have some mixed into the soil, I like to sprinkle some extra mycorrhiza over the topsoil and root zone. The root zone, by the way, is looking mint on the sunset paradise. Everything healthy and happy and off to a great start. Into the basement grow bag she goes with her label. Now time to get the new AC Infinity kit set up. This kit right here is the 4x4 AC Infinity Advanced Grow System. It comes strapped with pretty much everything I need to start a new grow. A 400 watt full spectrum grow light with good industry standard Samsung LEDs, a Cloudline light 6 inch extractor fan, a carbon filter, two clip fans, all wrapped inside the thickest tent we've tested on the channel. Then the best part, the reason I chose this setup, the controller 69. Put four devices on it with Wi-Fi, app control. All we're looking for is we need a couple names. I mean, if it controls things and does grow cycles, why don't we just call it a controller? I like that controller idea, but why don't we call it controller 69? <laughs> This is what's going to connect all my grow gear together so I can set climate triggers, schedules, and grow cycles, access data graphs, alerts, and programs via the app on my phone. She's basically the mothership of my grow tent. Pruning snips, plant ties, foil tape, fabric pots, and the trellis knit are the finer details that make this the complete kit it is. With the help of my growbro Diego and his mustache, we got everything set up with the breeze and introduced the ladies into their brand spanking new home. I had them far away from the LED, which was set to 100% and giving the plants about 300 to 400 ppfd. Moving on to day 42 of veg, week 6. And it was time to defoliate the sunset paradise. As you can see, just a transplant and a little bit of time can work wonders. The sunset has exploded with growth and for the most part is looking okay. She does have a slight deficiency on her top though. I think it's the start of a magnesium deficiency. I'd love to hear what you think it is down in the comments below and how you'd correct it. None of the other strains on this run were showing any of these symptoms, at least yet. My plan was to give her a small dose of Meg Amped from Cutting Edge Solutions on one of her next feedings, then just keep a close eye on her. My goal for defoliation and lollipop was to clear out all the main stem fan leaves covering bud sites and any small bottom growth that was going to turn into popcorn nugs. Taking a closer look and you can see she's really good at growing massive fan leaves. And this right here is what she looks like after defoliation. You can see from this angle just how much the soil has settled since our original transplant. So it was also a good time to do a top dressing and fill her back up. This would help me prevent the plant's top roots from drying up and giving them extra room to expand. I find myself doing this probably every two to three weeks. But anyway, let's jump to the last week of veg. Day 58, week nine. The plants were moving along nicely and the AC Infinity app was logging the humidity inside the tents at around 68 to 72 and the heat 18 to 21 degrees over the last week. You know that you got it. No doubt about it. I had the LED set to 100% so with temps this low, this LED definitely has a low heat output. I also have it nice and close to the extractor so that helps big time too. 
This Sunset Paradise was looking nice, healthy, and just an inch or two shorter than the Eldorado OG. With all this new growth, it was time to do the last defoliation and veg. After getting everything tidied up, I wanted to give them the regular feeding of nutrients, which by the way, I'm using cutting edge solutions on this grow. By now, they were easily eating every three days, pushing every two. I could tell that the aeration in these fabric pots were making a huge difference in the amount of water that these girls were drinking up compared to the buckets or garden pots from the past. With everything defoliated and looking clean, the plan from here is to give them three days to recuperate and change the light cycle to 12-12 using the AC Infinity app. Fast forward to day 27 flower, week four, and this sunset paradise is looking fabulous. This main cola and the rest of the buds are starting to thicken out. And one thing to note is her internal spacing is really far apart and she's definitely stretched up. This isn't good, bad, right or wrong, but just interesting to note nonetheless. Her trichomes are starting to form and the aromas are definitely notable by this point, which I'll cover in a sec. Overall, she's loving the LED and conditions and doing great with her flower development. Oh, and that deficiency from veg is well and gone. I'm a few days late, but it was time for her last defoliation. Usually I hit this around day 21. And as usual, I'm removing any major fan leaves blocking bud sites and cleaning up the bottom. Right away, I was noticing a musky lavender. It was light, but it was there. Something similar and in the same realm as past potent strains, burnt toast, and black hole, which have both won me cannabis cups last year. So immediately, I got a little excited, even though it was still early in flower, on this strain's full potential. So here she is after defoliation. Now we can really see all the buds shining through, and it's at this point, I could tell she was shaping up to be a medium producing plant. But let's see, at the end of the episode, we'll be checking her final bud weight. Once we got the ladies back in the tent, it was time to hit them with another scheduled feeding at about pH 6. The main goal from here is to never miss a feeding and make sure the conditions stay where they need to be. Day 34 flower, week five, just one week later, and we can see some major differences in the sunset paradise. The biggest differences is the amount of trichome production and bud density. She's loving life, and the other strains in this run had no complaints either. Each expressing their own terpene profile, and combined, this tent is really starting to reek. A carbon filter was definitely a good idea for this run. Let's jump forward into late flower, day 52, week 8. Things have taken a turn for the purple. This is something that is always a pleasure to have in the garden, especially when it's backed by the terps. Pretty much all the fan leaves have started to go this deep dark purple about a week ago, and I don't think it's slowing down anytime soon. Let's take a look at what she looks like out of the tent. I wanted to grab a quick peek at her trichomes and make a decision when it was going to be time to chop. And let's just say, welcome to day 53 flower, week 8. And it was harvest day. Sunset Paradise is a showstopper. The combination of deep, dark purple with the light green makes me feel like she's posing for the cover of High Times Magazine or something. You go, girl. Paradise Seeds called for a 50-day harvest time, and well, we're at day 53, so they nailed it there. 
and the terps and aromas on this girl have matured into a beautiful musky lavender, pepper earthy backed by gas. It has elements that are so familiar from past winning strains on the channel. Definite crowd pleaser and a good fit for gas lovers. Before we cover the terpenes and cannabinoids on this week's lab test, let's answer the ultimate question. What is my overall review of growing the Sunset Paradise and did it make it into my mother plant room? Shine a light through a prison full spectrum. She was really easy to grow, beautiful to look at, good final weight, which we'll look at in just a sec. So I'd say 100% approved. And the fact that out of this tent, she was my selected strain to compete with in upcoming cannabis cups shows she's something special to me. But I didn't end up keeping a cut for my mother collection. You probably know by now that I'm a funky, fruity, terp kind of guy. Always on the hunt for the next fruity concoction. So yeah, approved, but not kept. Let's talk final dry flower weight. This single Sunset Paradise plant in a five gallon fabric pot produced a total of 85 grams, plus the five grams we sent to lab and the four grams we cheaped and tested. So that gives us a total of 94 grams of potent stanky goodness. I cannot wait to test the effects on this baby in the post-harvest analysis. But first, let's talk lab results from Imperial Labs here in Colombia. We all know numbers don't lie, so here it is. A total THC level of 27% and a mind-numbing cannabinoid level of 34%. This Sunset Paradise absolutely shredded the cannabinoid test. And in the terp department, she was mostly terpenoline, humulene, and pinene. But the most shocking part was that she had decent levels of limonene, which is extremely shocking to me because I relate this terp to the super lemon hazes of the world, or anything citrusy. But the more we test on this channel, the more we learn. But it seems to be the unique combination of each terpene in different levels that gives each strain its unique flavors. Overall, I'm really impressed with how the Sunset Paradise did in the lab. It's not every day I get a strain hitting over 34% in the cannabinoids. Props to Luke and the team at Paradise Seeds for another banging lab test, boys. After a few weeks of curing in glass jars, my sea vault kit showed up. I've been dying to step up my cure game and I've had my eye on the sea vaults for years now. I'll be doing a deep dive on my dry and cure process really soon, but I wanted to mention that the Sunset Paradise got put into a one liter sea vault right away. I had two months left until the next cannabis cup and I wanted her to soak in her own stank for as long as possible before entering the sample. Before we jump to the wild adventures that was the Cannabis Cup here in Colombia, let's first talk about our LED and advanced grow kit for a second. I have to say, I'm really impressed at how well this fully integrated system worked together during this grow. The app easily allowed me to monitor on the daily and control things I've never been able to control before like the clip fans reacting to the heat and adjusting speed, and my exhaust fans slowing down or picking up depending on the conditions. I'm absolutely hooked and I'm going to be continuing to test this kit for a good minute. It's worked wonders for me and now I can definitely recommend the AC Infinity Advanced Grow Systems for new growers looking for a complete kit that has everything you need in one box. So if you are thinking about picking up a new kit or switching out a piece of gear in your current grow, use the discount code HOMEGROWTV at checkout and save a nice chunk of change. I'm sure you know this by now, but anytime you use a HomeGrow TV affiliate code, we make a small commission and it helps support the channel. But in no means is that why this video exists. It's here to educate and entertain you. And yada, yada, yada. Let's jump into the behind the scenes look at Copa del Sol. And then, uh, oh my God, just look at us babies. I'm gonna miss them. We're only gone for two days, but I know I'm gonna miss them so hard. Right? So before we leave, I just want to show you how to play. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna miss you, lady. Yeah, and then the weed that we're bringing. Yeah, yes. fuck yeah. Oh, bro. So the official start of Cartago round two, 2022. We're going for it. You ready, bro? I'm ready for it. We got the Home Grow TV mobile, nice and trusty. Q, oh, yeah. Q is taking round number one of the drive. Let's do it. We got the boys with us. Well, boy and girl. But are we ready to rock, dude? We're going for it. So, part two. Part two, uh, not really a technical yeah. error, just a precaution to be sure. Fixing the air conditioning before going to 30 degrees, sun uh, burning on the car and having to stop in the middle of nowhere. 
So I think it's a smart choice. We're gonna arrive a little bit later, but I'm not worried. We have weed, we have food, we have uh, the bodies here. Yeah, dude. So we're just gonna go for it. Let's fix the article. Yeah, here we go. Here we are at, at Poleto Itis. But yeah, so far been a very interesting start to the trip. We're no way late, right boys? We're not late. But uh, let's just call it an interesting start. We're not out of the city yet, but we're almost out. The place we gotta go gets pretty hot and sticky, so AC was a must. What we thought would be a quick pit stop to fix the AC turned into four hours of welding random pipes, searching for dead wires. So yeah, we just decided to move on and hopefully find a solution tomorrow. Well, we finally checked in, bro. We made it. Oh, we made it, buddy. Holy shit. Thanks to you. Oh, <laughs> I did the drive and you had the doobies on lock. <laughs> I did the rolling. <laughs> you did the other type of rolling. That's... But we made it, mom. Yeah, so we got the whole doobie bar already set up. Oh, mom. Look at that. So what we got here? Sunset Paradise and the Power S1, bro. Fucking beautiful. Look at that, boys. And that's what you're throwing in for the cup tomorrow? Um, yeah, we're throwing in the Sunset Paradise. But not this flower, just the, the other ones are in a closed jar with the humidity pack. Those are... Sea Vault Vault. This is a, the B category. Our co-pilot is out. Alright, yeah, it's time to smoke the last doobie of the night, bro. Get a good rest and uh, hit the cup tomorrow. All right, so we're at the second mechanic of the trip, right? Second? Second? No, oh, well, we did a little tour, but eventually this is the guy we're gonna put the touch. Second of the day, third of the trip. It's day two, guys. We're at a mechanic again. And uh, we're hopefully gonna fix the, the air problem today, boys. Let's do it. We need some air conditioning, though. It's yeah. more than 30 degrees, and uh, on the highway, it can get even hotter. Oh, dude. It's a crazy world, looking to find my place and all they do is So we made it boys, day one, here we are with Anderson, El Witerrier, Dia Uno, Copa del Sol, ah. Estamos, Con toda... llegamos! Bueno, armar porritos de una. Here it is boys, so we got my sample here, the Sunset Paradise. By Paradise Seeds going in, Q with the exact same strain, different yes. pheno. The cannabis cup has started. It's officially begun. Yes, here we go. Crazy side note, Grobro, Mr. Q and I are competing with the same breeder, same strain, just different pheno. Basically, only difference was that he popped a different seed from the same pack and it just so happened to be the tastiest thing that he had at the time too. Done, oh, dude, what else we got in here? Got a, not a sunset paradise. We got uh, Power S1, we got another Mendo Sino Skull. After dropping our entries, we hit the booths. And something that I love about the events here in Colombia is that there's always copious amounts of free outdoor buds to try. So you might not believe it, but things work differently here in Colombia. The mechanic who fixed our AC actually drove to come pick us up and take us home. There it is. Personally delivered by Hector, bro. Hector we, did it. Dude, he we, did it. He kept his promise. The same day, he worked the whole day, but we were doing the fucking kata at the cup. Yeah. And Hector, he did it. There it is, bro. Cut to day two, and it was the award ceremony and dab marathon. I couldn't believe it, but we took home first place in the indoor flower category, with Mr. Q right on my tail in a close second. The judges said that he was extremely close, and it was the few details that was in Cure that made the difference for them. What is really cool about this is that we're actually gonna sit down with Mr. Q and dive into the differences between our two entries in the post-harvest analysis. But to respect everyone's time, I'm gonna upload the post-harvest analysis as a separate upload tomorrow. Let me know what you think about this, but I thought it would be a good way to keep each upload to a manageable length to watch in one sitting. Curious to hear your thoughts in the comments below. If you've made it to this point in the episode, you're absolutely amazing. I'd really appreciate it if you'd like and subscribe. Much love, and we'll see you next week on Home Grow TV. All right, so we're officially back in the office and back from the cut, bro. We made it. 
What an adventure. The air conditioning was working, so it was pretty comfortable. Actually, we got lucky on the way back. We didn't get stopped that many times. It was very easy to go back. So we basically enjoyed. We even had company of Heisen's crew, of Alex, who invited us for some dab. So, wow. Oof, yeah, it was a nice ride back in that sense, that, dude. That was great. And then the food, that was all you, buddy. <laughs> really good. And so now that we're back, we're, of course, we're rolling up. What are we rolling up? Rolling up this time, Tangerine Sorbet, the next train that we're going to compete with for Paradise Seats. But yesterday, buddy, this stole the show. Yeah, no doubt, bro. The Sunset Paradise right here, guys. That's what we had. And again, well, we just had same strain, different pheno, different techniques and different stuff going on. Guys, enough talk, enough about the Cannabis Cup. I think it's time for the post-harvest analysis. Let's go.